Ever wondered how a self-powered aircraft comes to life? Join us as we go behind the scenes with Maxwell Chikambuzo, the visionary engineer who's revolutionizing aviation with his groundbreaking design. From humble beginnings in Zimbabwe to global recognition, Maxwell's journey is a testament to the power of persistence. His self-powered aircraft, once dismissed as impossible, now stands as a beacon of innovation in sustainable flight. The genesis of this marvel lies in Maxwell's childhood fascination with machines and renewable energy. At just 14, he built his first rudimentary generator, sparking a lifelong obsession with clean energy solutions. Years later, while studying the limitations of electric aircraft, he asked a bold question, what if a plane could power itself? This simple yet revolutionary idea became the foundation for his life's work. Maxwell's early sketches, scribbled in worn notebooks, revealed a design unlike anything in aviation history. His prototypes, often assembled from scrap materials, were met with skepticism from established engineers. Undeterred, he spent countless nights refining calculations, convinced that the laws of physics held untapped potential. The breakthrough came when he reimagined energy conversion, bypassing traditional battery limitations. His patented system harnessed kinetic and electromagnetic energy in flight, creating a near-perpetual feedback loop. Early tests, conducted in a makeshift hangar, showed promise but exposed critical flaws in weight distribution. One prototype, nicknamed Phoenix, crashed spectacularly during its maiden taxi test, nearly destroying years of work. Maxwell's team, a tight-knit group of volunteers, worked 72-hour shifts to rebuild it from the wreckage. Financial constraints forced creative solutions like repurposing motorcycle parts for the landing gear. A pivotal moment came when a local farmer, inspired by Maxwell's vision, donated solar panels to power the workshop. By 2018, the third-generation aircraft achieved stable hover, a milestone that attracted clandestine interest from aerospace giants. Maxwell refused buyout offers, insisting the technology remain open source for humanitarian applications. The final design, a sleek hybrid of fixed wing and VTOL capabilities, defied conventional aerodynamics. Its carbon fiber skeleton, woven with piezoelectric filaments, generated energy from wing vibrations. Custom-built turbines, no larger than coffee cans, converted airflow into auxiliary power during descent. The cockpit, stripped of unnecessary weight, featured a single touchscreen displaying real-time energy flow. Test pilots reported an eerie quietness, comparing it to gliding on a cushion of air. During its first unassisted takeoff, the aircraft circled the runway for 90 minutes without refueling, a world record. Skeptics demanded third-party verification, which only confirmed the impossibility turned reality. Maxwell's invention coincided with global fuel shortages, amplifying its potential impact. Environmentalists hailed it as the first true zero-emission aircraft, while critics questioned scalability. The team's next challenge? Reducing production costs to make it accessible to developing nations. Maxwell's philosophy, if it doesn't help villages, it doesn't help humanity, guided every decision. Collaborations with universities birthed a student-led initiative to adapt the technology for medical supply drones. In 2022, a modified version delivered vaccines to remote clinics during a deadly typhoon outbreak. The aircraft's success hinges on its energy web, a proprietary network of microgenerators. Each component, from rivets to wing flaps, contributes to power generation without compromising structural integrity. Computational fluid dynamic simulations run on borrowed supercomputers, optimized every curve for maximum efficiency. Maxwell often joked that the plane flies on math, a nod to the algorithms that replace guesswork. Behind the euphoria of success lay years of legal battles over patents and regulatory hurdles. Aviation authorities struggled to classify an aircraft with no fuel, no emissions, and no precedent. Maxwell's insistence on transparency, publishing test data publicly, earned both admiration and industrial espionage attempts. The final certification process required inventing new safety standards for self-powering systems. Today, the aircraft undergoes rigorous stress tests in extreme climates, from Arctic winds to desert heat. Each trial provides data to improve the next iteration, 
already dubbed Project Infinity. Maxwell's ultimate goal? A passenger model that makes fossil-fueled flights obsolete. His team's mantra, every what counts, reflects the relentless pursuit of marginal gains. The workshop walls, plastered with failed designs, serve as a shrine to iterative progress. Visitors often mistake the aircraft for a spaceship, a comparison Maxwell embraces with a grin. The future isn't coming, he tells wide-eyed students. You're building it right now. Maxwell's workshop hums with the sound of 3D printers molding wing components layer by microscopic layer. A whiteboard in the corner overflows with equations, half-erased sketches, and the scribbled words, gravity is a design flaw. His team moves like clockwork, calibrating sensors that measure air resistance down to a thousandth of a newton. The aircraft's skeletal frame hangs suspended, its ribs glowing under UV lights curing the resin joints. Every morning begins with the same ritual. Maxwell runs his fingers along the wing's leading edge, feeling for imperfections invisible to machines. Precision isn't about perfection, he often mutters. It's about knowing where to let the material breathe. The workshop's coffee machine, jury-rigged to a hand-crank generator, serves as a not-so-subtle reminder of their energy principles. Early prototypes dangle from the ceiling like mobiles, their failures preserved as teaching tools. One, nicknamed Icarus, bears the scorch marks of an overambitious solar panel array that caught fire mid-test. The team's youngest member, a 17-year-old coding prodigy, rewrites flight algorithms between high school classes. Maxwell's insistence on hiring outsiders, artists, musicians, even a pastry chef, sparks constant debate. An engineer sees limits, he argues, but a violinist hears tension in the wires no textbook explains. Their breakthrough came not in a lab, but during a power outage that forced them to work by candlelight. Staring at flickering shadows on the hangar wall, Maxwell noticed how air currents distorted the flame's glow. That night, they redesigned the wingtips to mimic the turbulence patterns of a dancing candle. Wind tunnel tests showed a 12% reduction in drag, proving poetry could indeed improve physics. The aircraft's energy web relies on a controversial principle, controlled resonance. Critics called it a fancy term for vibration, until they saw the data. Microscopic piezoelectric hairs lining the wings convert even mild turbulence into usable current. During storms, the system actually performs better, like a sailboat harnessing headwinds. Maxwell's patent application included a single handwritten note. Nature already solved this. We're just catching up. The cockpit's ergonomics drew inspiration from an unlikely source, motorcycle sidecar racers. Test pilots reported unprecedented spatial awareness, crediting the seat's eight-degree tilt and foot pedals that talk back. A single switch, protected by a flip cover labeled Last Resort, engages the emergency plasma thrusters. No pilot has ever needed it, but its mere existence keeps aerospace theorists awake at night. Fueling, or rather unfueling, the aircraft involves a ritual unlike any in aviation history. Technicians prime the system by playing specific frequencies through onboard speakers, aligning the energy web. The process, dubbed singing the plane awake, takes exactly 11 minutes, a quirk of quantum harmonics. During monsoon trials in India, the team discovered the aircraft passively harvested static from rain friction. This accidental feature now powers its onboard systems for an extra 23 minutes in heavy precipitation. Maxwell's refusal to install black boxes caused a two-year standoff with regulators. If you want data, he insisted, ride along and feel it yourself. They compromised with a glass-encased data orchard, sprouting real-time mechanical feedback as glowing vines on a 3D lattice. Maintenance crews now diagnose issues by watching how the virtual vines wilt or bloom. The first cross-country flight revealed an unexpected side effect. Birds avoided the aircraft entirely. Biologists later confirmed its resonance frequencies mimicked predatory hawk wing beats. Environmentalists cheered, while ornithologists demanded studies on long-term ecosystem impacts. Maxwell, ever pragmatic, added avian force field to the patent as a secondary function. Night flights uncovered another marvel. The aircraft's skin emitted a faint bioluminescent glow. This wasn't planned, 
the composite material's carbon nanotubes fluoresced under certain electrical conditions. Rather than fight it, engineers amplified the effect for visibility, ditching traditional navigation lights. The FAA's approval document included a handwritten addendum. Does this count as a UFO now? Maxwell's greatest pride isn't the aircraft's speed or range, but its silence. Noise pollution maps prove it's quieter at 10,000 feet than a library at midnight. This allowed flight paths over previously restricted areas, like national parks at dawn. During one test, a herd of deer slept undisturbed directly beneath its landing approach. The control surfaces move so fluidly, they appear to reshape like liquid metal. This illusion comes from millions of microactuators working in organic synchronization. Pilots describe the sensation as thinking your way through the sky rather than flying. Aerospace rivals have spent millions trying to replicate the effect with hydraulics, failing every time. Maxwell's secret lay in studying how cuttlefish tentacles manipulate water flow at the molecular level. The aircraft's skin, when viewed under a microscope, reveals a fractal pattern of overlapping scales. Each scale flexes independently, reducing surface drag better than any synthetic material. A Swiss watchmaker once offered $20 million for exclusive rights to the texture alone. Maxwell countered by sending her the blueprint as a birthday gift, no strings attached. Humidity poses the only remaining challenge. Condensation disrupts the energy web's fine balance. The team's current experiment involves embedding silk proteins to wick moisture like a spider's web. Early tests show promise with the side benefit of self-cleaning wings during flight. Maxwell's original notebook entry for this idea reads, ask a spider, then listen better. Every component has a backup, but the backups themselves have no single point of failure. This distributed redundancy means the aircraft can lose 30% of any system and self-reconfigure. During a harrowing test over the Pacific, it landed safely with 47% of its left wing sheared off. Investigators found the remaining structure had spontaneously reinforced itself via crystallized stress patterns. Material scientists are still writing papers about that particular phenomenon. The aircraft's creation birthed seven unrelated inventions, including a shock-absorbing wheelchair. Maxwell's policy, if it helps someone, spin it off immediately, keeps the team perpetually pivoting. Their waste pile is really a treasure trove of half-finished ideas awaiting the right problem. One intern's failed capacitor design now powers earthquake sensors in Nepal. The workshop's walls bear scars from every trial, a dent from a runaway turbine, soot streaks from the Icarus incident. Maxwell refuses to repaint them, calling the marks the real blueprint. Visitors must pass under the mounted wreckage of the first prototype to enter, a silent reminder. New hires receive a single question. What's something impossible you're willing to waste years on? Answers range from teleporting chocolate to a printer that works every single time. All get hired, provided they can defend their insanity with basic physics. The aircraft's manual, if printed, would fill 17 volumes, but no one's ever opened one. Instead, trainees learn by assembling miniature versions blindfolded, guided only by torque feedback. This method, borrowed from sushi chefs, produces engineers who think with their hands. The team's unofficial motto, scrawled inside the toilet stall, if it works on paper, it's already obsolete. Maxwell's morning routine includes yelling at the aircraft like an old car. Wake up, you beautiful parasite. Technicians swear it performs better after these pep talks, though the data says otherwise. The only time the workshop falls silent is during the daily Minute of Gratitude, at 3.17 p.m. This tradition began after they realized that exact moment was when the first stable hover occurred. Even FedEx deliveries pause outside the hangar until the ritual ends. The aircraft has no serial number, only a name, in zoo, Shona for Elephant. It earned this after surviving a test where 23 simultaneous system failures should have been catastrophic. Like an elephant never forgetting, the plane's neural network remembers every flight strain. This mechanical memory lets it predict turbulence routes hours in advance. Meteorologists now beg for access to its atmospheric data, calling it the world's smartest barometer. 
Maxwell's greatest fear isn't failure, but seeing his invention weaponized. Early on, he built a self-destruct sequence into the core programming triggered by hostile payloads. The mechanism, inspired by octopus autophagy, makes critical components dissolve into inert gel. Military contractors walked out of negotiations when he demonstrated this ethical dead man switch. The aircraft's true cost remains a mystery, even to its creators. Accounting gave up tracking hours ago, classifying expenses as existential R&D. Maxwell's back of napkin math suggests it's cheaper than a single F-35 fighter jet. But ours, he grins, pays you back in lightning.